Good morning. Today is the 8th of October and this is uh, Bracefield Social Club in Romsey, Hampshire. We'll be doing probably two parts of a slightly shambolic shuffle today around this uh, annual autumn car show that they have. I've had something very tasty here to uh, start off with you. It's this very, very nice Bentley Turbo RL close to beige leather interior. I have driven um, something very similar to this. I've driven a Bentley 8. It's not up on the channel yet. Uh, but this is basically the sort of later version of the sort of Turbo R, which was similar to V8 of the Mulsanne and things like that. 1995-1996 registration. Not quite a beige leather interior. I think it all stands for a long wheelbase. That is uh, the most agreeable start. Also agreeable is this um, Austin Healy Frog Ice Sprite. Um, Northern Irish plate, this has probably been replaced. I just think registration might have been something different. And there you see exactly how you access the engine compartment there. Nice and easy. More Austin Healy action here. Austin Healy 3000, no, sorry, 106 this one is. Before the 3000. Have a look at the badge before you make any assumptions. That's always a good idea. So uh, about 1958, something like that. I think these are built at Abingdon, actually, from memory. This one's got the hard top on, which, uh, you know, we are in the autumn now, so it's probably a good idea. No synchromesh on first, of course. I think there's a Moss gearbox in these, like the 3000. MGTF 1500. This one is a uh, left-hand drive one with white wall tyres. I think people are still trying to work out where to park. The space is quite limited here. Um, I decided to get here early. I, unfortunately, my car I was going to show isn't ready yet, so I've had to come park on the road in shame. Never mind. 7778 MGB Roadster with some mini light star wheels. It's actually really similar, this one, to the one that I drove on Sensible Second Hand Classics back in the summer. This is an earlier one. But... Uh, Similar colour, the bumpers, and in very, very nice condition, actually. That was beautiful. Morris Minor with um, marina wheels on it, so you get the front disc brakes and a brake servo. It's not a bad idea, really. 68, 69 registration, two-door saloon. And someone's actually put a... Actually, what gearbox is that in there? That might be... Um, PG1 actually, that might be out of a Montego or something. It's just a good idea actually. Um, it's not a, a, a Ford Type 9 because that's got a different shift pattern. But that's another thing you can do, you can put the V4 Type 9s in, but they are very, very um, expensive now to buy a Type 9 gearbox because the, uh, the sort of things like the Sierras and the Granadas they came out of are quite valuable now. Rubber P6, uh, 3500 V8. That looks really bright on camera, actually. Wow. <laughs> um, very nice, kind of unmolested example. Vinyl roof on an end, so 74, 75 registration. And we've got uh, more MG action. We've got lots of MG action today. Mark II. Oh, there we go, yes. Yes, of course. Yes, I remember this one now. Review information sheet. So it's a TD. It's a late TD. Um, it's a uh, 52. The uh, 1250cc Ekpag engine. Ford Zephyr Zodiac Mark II. This is uh, one of the conversions, I think, by uh, Abbott Safana. Look at that. Raymond Mays and Partners who were servicing Raymond May's Maze tuning, of course. This would be very rare. I've seen lots of these Mark II um, Zephyrs and Zodiacs recently, but not um, be able to find a mistake version. 1965, uh, this is a Ford um, Falcon Futura. We see this quite a lot, actually. A lot of the cars here today are um, being displayed by members of Tesla Motor Enthusiasts, the club that I'm part of. So uh, we will see some cars we've seen before if you've been watching the videos for some time. 
very nice condition like uh, a lot of the cars here. We'll go to the back row actually as well because we've got a few other things over there too. 2005 approximately uh, MGTF. Actually it will be a 2005 because production of these finished in 2005. And you can't put a later plate on an earlier car so either that or a bit later. Fire Frost of course is the colour hence the plate. 2006 registration, one obviously made in 2005. I think the latest MG Rover rear car I've seen is an 11 or 12 plate. But those are pretty rare. Then we've got this interesting sort of creation over here. I think we've seen this before actually, maybe even here a year ago, an Onyx. Obviously mini based, you can see the uh, top of the engine there, maybe some Metro bits in there as well. What this was based on was um, originally registered in about 83. Those dials are a bit later and so have the stalks today. So, you see some other bits on there as well. Very small little thing, isn't it? Be really careful with that, you don't burn yourself when you're getting in. 2006 Mitsubishi Lancer Evolution 9. This is the FQ320. Someone's put some uh, extremely rally and spy wheels on this one that's got not run over by that many views that's probably a good idea he's kind of parked quite in the way there so they're probably going to move him at some point i imagine um but we've got very very early land rover series one here that's a extremely early one that's sort of 49 or something like that look at that it's got the um it's got the grill over the headlamps and things that's um extraordinary isn't it let's walk over here before we get run over Mark 2 Mini here um, Cooper with the uh, 998cc engine I think or was it 997 on these I can't remember uh, 6869 plate Mark 2 as you can tell straight away by the rear lights See, this will be worth, it's, if that's a real Cooper, that'll be worth a lot of money, actually. Mini pickup, 1966. Don't see too many of the sort of Mark I style pickups. They um, remained similar until the end of production in 1982, but this is a Mark I, a Morris badged one. Look at that, just a really kind of basic looking press steel grill and everything. MGA. It's a 1600. Motion sheet tells me it's a Mark 1 1960 600A. Some little cushions in there. Another P6 here. This one is a uh, 2000 T6 just before they went to a 2200 so I imagine that's a 72 be the uh, series one and a half I think they call these yes yeah, that's, that's the flame yeah. Yeah. another test for the emotion enthusiast member a couple of Morris miners this one is a traveler Trafalgar Blue 6869 on a G. Very sort of original looking spec car, this. And a Tora. Let's have a look at the uh, Instagram wipers. So this will be probably at some point just before 1965. The wipers don't meet in the middle, so it'll have the. Um, 1098cc engine, as well of course this one. 1939 Rover 10, which is for sale. Plate um, for Solihull WK. This one actually was, I think, the uh, 1939 um, model, which was a motor show. There we go, 13,000. £500, um, 07, sorry, 01794 
most of the time you're going to be shows. <laughs> the numbers that are on the advertising sheets are and mobile numbers. Another round GA here. Would have been exported originally from the USA, I think, with left hand drive. Beautiful colour. Someone's put a five speed gearbox in this one as well. A little, tiny little stubby lever. It'd be earlier than the other one because that's, um, that's a 1.5 one. Uh, yep, Lomax based on Citroen 2CV. There's actually a few of these in the club. I presume the registration of this is the uh, car it's based on. Then this. This is uh, <laughs> something that comes out quite a lot. It, it's 20s Austin, but it's been extensively kind of changed and modified over a very, very long period of time. <laughs> so there we go. Yeah, it's a, it's a heavy 12.4, and it was restored in the 70s to its uh, current appearance. Over 14. More examples of cars from Tesla Motion Enthusiasts, which was founded, I think this is the 50th year actually. So it's been around um, a while. It's just like seat fabric in there. It's already got quite a large variety, we have very, very sort of early on in the day. 1938 Austin 7 Ruby Saloon. Yeah, quite a late one actually, that. <laughs> Ford Anglia Estate, uh, I think maybe these are still a 105E. 1966. A GT badge. Oh no, sorry, it's 1200, so that'll be um, 123E, I think these are called, if it's uh, got the 1.2 engine. See, that steering wheel is not original, but it looks quite, um, it's quite tasteful, really. There's some extra gauges and things in there. Even a V8 250, another club member's car. It's almost blue on camera, but it is green. Sixty-seven, sixty-eight registration. I think they came out in '67. The V8 250s. Before that, it was called a V8 two and a half liter. Then we have an absolute poverty spec Mini. This one is a city. You don't even get a passenger mirror. From uh, Managerton, let's have a look at the. Yeah, it's a 1983. And there's just absolutely, utterly nothing. <laughs> nothing at all. I think the wheels have been changed. That's about it, really. Original and restored. Beautiful condition. But absolute sort of poverty spec goodness. Super Cover Plus. MGB, 73-74. We've got something that started life as an Austin in 1932, I think. What it is now, I don't know, it's sort of a custom thing, really. Got another one of these um, Mark II console Zephyr Zodiacs. This one's a console. Wish my autofocus wouldn't shimmer like that, it's really annoying. Deluxe version. Another Austin here, a slow vehicle, that is for boot. Quite literally, you don't get one as standard, so you have to fit your own. Rockin' fossils. Close peg for keeping the window open. A 
back to the other side, and it's sort of similar to that blue one. And we'll have a look at this Jaguar. This one is a Mark 9. So it's the last of this sort of big heavy saloon type from the 40s and 50s before the Mark 10 came in 1961. Very, very, very sort of big, heavy engineering. Solid wood dash, I think, in these. Probably exported originally to the United States. Left-hand drive. Typical colour, of course. Uh, the Viera, black with a red leather interior. And there's the engine. MG Magnet ZB with the larger rear window. Some smaller magnets on there, that's that. Seven in total. Let's get to 58 this one. So you can see in here in 1956 you've got the uh, larger rear window. Again, lovely sort of bright colour scheme from the late 50s. Another car from that sort of era as well, Humber Hawk. I think these came out about 58. Continued for, for about nine years. I think the last one was built about 67. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's 1960, so it's not similar in age to the magnet. Sort of looks a bit like a 55 Chevy, doesn't it? I think that's what they used to say about the Humber Hawks. Never in GTD. This one's got some wire wheels fitted. So this is a had a right hand drive conversion, originally exported to Florida. I think something like 75% of MG sports cars were exported actually. So this is a uh, TR5 PI, the American ones were called the TRT50. Shed the fuel injection system with um, the Triumph 2.5 PI. So this will be about, I think these came out in 67 from memory and continue until 69. That one's, yeah, 67, 68 on an F. We've got a couple of interesting looking trikes here. Well, that one's got two seats now, looks interesting. So does that one. Oh yeah, you just have a normal gear lever. Have you seen this one before, viewers? I have a feeling that we have. Yes, we have. But we would have seen that um, at the uh, Departure Lounge Cafe show last weekend. This is not an official Mini Cabrio. This didn't come out to the 1990s. This will be a conversion um, on a 1987-88 Mini basis. Also got another non-standard being next to it with the Honda. That's like a sort of B or D series engine, I think. It's amazing that that engine would never have been designed to run television in sump, and yet someone's had to sort of work that out. Five-speed gearbox in this as well, probably from the EP3 Type R. So 1590, that's... Um, 1.6 D series I think also put Mark II mini rear lights on that to make it look older but it's actually a, a, a series let's get it right um, uh, no sorry Mark VI this one uh, be about 95 so yes yeah, some very clever engineering going on to sort of change that a bit contrast with Austin A30 the uh, smaller rear window another Series 1 Land Rover here, a little bit later than the other one, still probably what early 50s. Try to fall over here, views, it's always a possibility. Right, let's uh, go over to the other section, shall we? I don't know why this little Lost in Seven is sitting on its own, it looks a bit sad, really. It's be one of the later ones again, like the other two. 
mid to late thirties. And again, you don't you don't get a boot, so you have to provide your own. Okay, from Super Seven, VR five hundred. Don't remember offhand actually what um, engine is in these. Six speed gearbox though. Imagine this will be from two thousand or something. Still being able to switch them underneath somewhere where you can't see it. Bit of a contrast really with um, this uh, Series 1 Land Rover next to it. Three Series 1s in one little show. And we've got a BMW Zeta. Three wheels. You could get four wheels in some of the markets. We only got three, I think, the ones that are built over here. 1988-89 Ford Escort XR3 Cabrio. With the CVH, of course. Typical sort of 80s, isn't it, with that colour? <coughs> Absolutely typical. It's in Cambridge, this is a VA60 shape. Someone's put some roast style wheels on this. That's someone's put an MGB engine, of course, because you can. It's very easy swap to do that. Wish it would have been a 1.6 B series. It's probably now 1.8, or possibly even larger than that. It's a modified one. Certainly quite agreeable weather, isn't it? And we've got another Austin 7. More test value motion is easy, yes, of course. PD Tora. It's like a fabric. No, it's not a fabric body actually, because you can see it's um, it's a rust. One local family only for many years. Uh, Osa 771 874 471. Wow. I think all of this available for hire. I thought it was a 49, it's actually a 48. I'm getting better views very gradually. Another Daimler V8 250. Gosh, there's two of them here. 68, 69 on a G. Mark II Golf GTI. 1987 to 88 on an E. Five door with the BBS wheels, correct interior. That is just the uh, eight valve. Something interesting is happening outside. This is getting full in here, of course. Morris Isis. Gosh, this is um, unusual, isn't it? It's the uh, shape of a Morris Oxford, the type that they uh, made into Hindustan Ambassador, but it's got a six cylinder engine. 2.6, a 1958. I bid at one of these in India, the Hindustan version of a taxi. It was um, interesting. I think they stopped making the Ambassadors in 2013 from memory. So a very, very, very long-lived design. This one's got trafficators. Interesting. We've got um, this BMW here, but I don't know if that's being exhibited actually here or not. So we'll go down a row and we uh, can see this, I presume this is a 911-996 Carrera 2 by registration. Is that a biscuit interior, viewers? Yes, it is. This one's the uh, manual. You could also get a Tiptronic, like I've driven before. So is that TF again, 2006. And then we've... Uh, I think a 67, 68 Mustang, sort of like a replica of one used in Bullet. And uh, right at the end, we've got the Wolseley. Now, we've seen this a lot at events this summer, actually. I think it's a 70, this one. It's a 1660. And it is in rather lovely condition. Rather lovely indeed. Yeah, I don't know what a tax disc it will be, or replica tax disc. 
Someone's actually fitted some um, slightly more comfortable front seats in here as well. That's uh, probably a good idea. That's um, it's very nice. It's very, very nice indeed. Right, they've actually filled the, the uh, club up, so we're going to have to go outside and see if we can find anybody else who's trying to find a parking space, which I think is over to the right and over to the left. Mercedes SL400. I don't think I've heard of an SL400 before. It must be the R172 shape, I think they call these. I can't remember now. Ford Explorer, 1999 to 2000. It has um, Jennings of Gateshead plates on it, but EV is a classic old sort of Essex registration, so I I think actually this would have been originally registered by Ford UK themselves and then sold in Gateshead. 1979 to 80 Ford Escort Mark II 1600 Sport. There's a lot of the RS2000 in the Mexico, things like that. We haven't seen a Sport for a while, have we? See different indicator lenses on the back and um, different um, wheels on this, but. Uh, Ooh, I can't remember the, name of the colour now, but um, still somebody will tell me in the comments section. So yeah, completely full. Well, I'll have to go and uh, see about Lexus elsewhere. That's why I had to get here early today. I suppose I'll have a little bit of walk viewers. 1983-84 TBR Tasman. I think it was a Rover ST1 facelift rear light, actually. Um, that's just something that lives um, one of the houses near the social club. So we ended up in the uh, overflow bit and we've got another Daimler V8 250. That's the third one today. This one is a two-tone, like one of the others, 67, 68 registration. Lotus Exige, I think this one is, 380 Cup, 2017 to 18 registration. So normally they don't actually put the Exige name on it, but I, th I think that's what they're, they're called. Yeah. I've still got the Vauxhall Cavalier um, Mark III indicated in wiper stalks in there. So here's the uh, Lexus again. Whatever you think of these, this one is in really, really nice condition. It's incredibly shiny wheels, aren't they? Yeah, I'm not sure um, what you've got to do. I think they came out in 2002, they made till 2012, so quite a lot of production run for those. Yeah. 1967-68, Jaguar 420. It's owned by another one of the Test Valley Motion Enthusiast members. Basically a facelifted S-Type with a 4.2 engine. Another one of the uh, MG T-Types. This will be a uh, TF. That's from 1954. MG Midget. About the bumpers. B Mark III, I think. Um, Square Arch 7172. I have driven one of these and it was quite an experience getting in and out of it, I can uh, I can tell you. <laughs> Another one of these, uh, these Walsley. Beautiful thing. 65, 1660, like the uh, room one we saw earlier. Such a typical kind of colour scheme of probably the early 60s, really. Might have started to look a bit dated by the mid 60s, certainly. The um, land crabs are out by now, which was supposed to replace them, but they sort of didn't, sort of did, really. 1950 MGYT. Nice colour scheme. I don't know if that's a leather interior, viewers, but. Um, if it is, it is a beige leather interior with wooden piping, which um, is most agreeable. 
We have a Series 2 P6 here, 2200 SC, which was the uh, base model actually, single carb. I think this colour is called Sandlo, but I might be wrong actually. Um, yeah, it'd be a 73 actually, we have a tax disc. Another TF here. I think normally the 1500 actually said on the, on the front wings that they will be 1500, so that will probably be a 1250, but I could be wrong. The only stag here, which I'm very surprised about, because normally there's about a million stags on every single show we go to these days. This one is a Mark 1 stag. Still got the body. This, should, this one um, should have the body coloured sills, actually, but lots of them don't. It's very difficult to spot a Mark 1 and Mark 2 sometimes. The way I do it normally with the interior lights. But yeah, we've got the upgraded alloy wheels as well. 1964 Austin Mini. This looks like a um, super deluxe version. Yes, it is. That is um, in very, very nice condition, actually. Wonderful. Someone's just arrived in this W202. C class. It's in the uh, Elegance trim. I thought the Elegance has got things like a leather interior, but clearly this hasn't got one. It's the badge as an Elegance, so that's not the case. What engine this has got? It's a C240, so it's got a six cylinder engine. Uh, personal play, don't know exactly what year it is, be probably late 90s, I would imagine. 1999 BMW Z3 tree facelift one Pretty quite a good car for a sort of a day like today I imagine that's a four cylinder the rear lights I think might have been changed actually for the later ones 1995 1996 Mercedes S124 oh my gosh it's the uh, E280 the beige leather interior. Might have to go and have a look for that uh, viewers actually. We've also got some other stuff down there because they just run out of space so go and have a look at that as well. Still got this uh, C126 that doesn't appear to have uh, found a space either. We'll keep walking down this road. I think there's some other stuff down here as well. 2002-3 Citroen Saxo Forte, it kind of looks a little bit like VTR or VTS, but it's not quite. It's one of the very latest ones they finished in 2003, actually. So go a little bit further down, we'll see cars that I think are more definitely likely to be part of this event. It's just not a funny space. 2002-3 BMW E46 convertible 325Ci. Smell the leather actually in that car in here. From where I'm standing. And then another little mini. 9495 Cooper 1.3i. Did they have twin tailpipes originally, viewers, on these? This was uh, after they had some fit cats from January 93, it was mandatory. And they also vent for the fuel injection. Imagine this registered by Rover Group themselves. GW's a Birmingham plate, it has a slough plate, so then she sold on to uh, um, that local dealer as a used car. But yeah, rather agreeable, really. Mini Clubman here. Interesting as a square plate. 19. 7071 on a K, reads classic cars on the prom. Strange sort of rogue style star wheels. Quite an early clubman actually. Um, it's not got reversing lights or anything. Enos Roadster, always known as an MX5. 93 94 registration. Mini pickup is leaving. 
that uh, S124 Mercedes we saw earlier is just here. Yes, viewers, a beige leather interior with wood. Mm. I do like a nice beige leather interior. And a bonus Toyota GT86. Do have a GR86 the other day, that'll be coming on the channel soon. Very early Mini here, which has clearly been to an awful lot of places, like the Isle of Wight Mini Adventure with West Country Minis in 2022. I was there and I made several videos of it. It's a 1960 this one, it's still badgered the 7 at the time. Classic colour for the early Minis, just absolutely wonderful in every way. Oh, and yes, there's a brilliant rat there too. Here's that um, C126 from earlier. 83, 84 registration. Got the larger wheels. Pillarless coupe. Cassette storage solutions. Um, the red items have been changed. It's for 500 SEC. So it would have been a very expensive car when it was new indeed. Nice 205 1.6 GTI, very late one. I think they stopped importing into this country about 1992, 1992 registration. You can see the facelifted rear end on that. The facelift occurred about 1990. It's very, very sort of original spec indeed. I forget the name of the colour, I'm sure somebody in the comments section will tell me. But yes rather agreeable. Very lovely. Jaguar has just turned up here. Go, okay, 140. Showing at the time that they've won Le Mans three times in a row. They're about to win it a few more times after that as well. MGB Roadster, 1970-71. Morris Minor two-door saloon. Be from the early 60s. We've got the wipers that show. Probably a 1098cc model, that one. For some reason, we've still got trafficators on that. MGB is leaving. So thank you ever so much indeed once again for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Like this video in the comment below and uh, we shall see you again soon for more incorrect information.